In this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize your images for a top-notch web performance and of course without losing quality. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist and today I will show you how to optimize images for your website with either premium or completely free software. But that's not all because I will also share with you a few great resources to get quality images and videos for your website, some free, some premium, so make sure you watch until the end to find out. Now, images are essential in the aesthetics of a website and the overall impression that it creates. But images can also be the worst enemy of your website because they can make it slow. And not only is it very annoying for your website visitors and potential clients, but it's also bad for search engine optimization, also known as SEO. And as you know, Google doesn't really like slow websites. Now, depending on the platform that you're using to create your websites, like WordPress, for example, there are a few plugins that can optimize your images. But we're not going to talk about this in this video and for a very simple reason. Our websites are already full of plugins, so yet another plugin is not something that you may want because it has more bloat and more moving parts, which makes maintaining the website even harder. What's more, image optimization plugins can add a lot of stress on the server where your website is hosted, especially if your website is on shared hosting, which is the case for many people. So a much better approach is to optimize your images before they actually even make it to your website. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. And we'll start with Affinity Photo. Okay, in case you don't know, Affinity Photo is the best alternative to Photoshop in my opinion. It's pretty cheap. It's like $54.99 in euros, probably the same in dollars, and you only pay once. So that's the great thing compared to the Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so we'll start with this picture. And as you can see here, the size is 14.8 megabytes. So roughly 15 megabytes and roughly 15,000 kilobytes. Now our goal is to go from 15,000 kilobytes to 400 or 300 kilobytes or even lower. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to right click on my image and click on open with Affinity Photo. Now I'm on a Mac, but if you're on a PC, there should be a similar procedure. Then I'm going to make sure that on the right hand side in the panel, I have my layer selected. And then I'm just going to hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC, or you can go to edit and just click copy. Okay, next I wanna create a new document, but before I do that, let me show you the size of this document. So this document is 16,024 pixels by 14,024 pixels, which is way too high. And the resolution, the DPI is 350, that's way too much. We don't want that. We want a web-friendly size. So what is a web-friendly size? Now, there are so many sizes, you can do pretty much anything you want, but one common size is a size with a 16 by nine ratio. So let me show you. I go to file, new, and then for the page width, it's going to be 1920, and the page height, 180. And for the DPI, I choose 144. Okay, that's a common size for Full HD, but nowadays we get more and more Retina screen, 4K screens, 5K screens. So if you're going to use this image for a full screen, full page background, it's gonna look a little bit mushy. So we want a higher quality. So we could use something like 2560 by 1440. Let me show you. So this is the ratio. So it's like a really a cinema ratio. Now, if we take a look at our original picture, it's a bit taller. It looks more like a square. Well, not really a square, but as you can see, it's taller than this. So if you want another good ratio, let me show you. Let's go to File, New, and this time it's going to be 2560, it's still the same thing. But then for the page height, it's going to be 1706. Click on Create. Okay, and now because we've previously copied our image, we can go to Edit, Paste, or we could have done Command V on a Mac and Control V on a PC. Now I'm just going to zoom back out. I'm going to select the Select tool, which is the arrow here in the toolbar on the left hand side. And then I'm just going to resize my image. And as you can see, it snaps perfectly. You don't want to have any space on the top, bottom, left and right. Okay, so that looks all right. And now I'm going to save. So I go to File, Export, and now it's asking me which format I want. Now by default, mine is set on JPEG, yours might be set on PNG. So just go to JPEG and then you can play with the slider. And as you drag the slider on the left hand side, you can see the estimated file size at the bottom. 
So for this first step, we want to be under one megabyte, even lower if we can with a good quality. So I see I have a lot of room here. So let me try 90. So 90 is 523 kilobytes, which is not what we want, but this is just the first optimization. So the real magic comes with the second optimization. So this is good. 90 is going to be pretty excellent quality. So let me export this. So I click on export. Then it's going to ask you where you want to save it. So I'm just going to give it a name and change it to Affinity Opt1. Click on save. And now if I go back, so here is my image and the final size is 536 kilobytes, which like I said, is not what we want, but let's fix this now. So open your browser and go to the squoosh.app website. And then I'm just going to drag the image onto the window. And now it's going to ask me which format I want. Now I'm going to select WebP because I'll be using this picture with WordPress and WordPress natively accepts WebP. But if you need something else, if uh, the system you're using doesn't take WebP, then you should use Moz JPEG. So I'm going to pick WebP and bear in mind, not WebP2 because it says it's unstable. Okay, so WebP and then you need to select a quality. Let me try with 85. And as you can see, we got a 74% reduction size. So now the final size is 138 kilobytes. So let's save this. Let's change the name and hit save. And the final size is 138 kilobytes. Not bad. We went from 15,000 kilobytes to 138 kilobytes. So let's take the calculator. So 14,800 divided by 138 we divided the file size by 107 times. How crazy is that? And if we take a look at the difference in quality between the first and second optimization, honestly, I can't see the difference. Okay, next, let's look at the process with Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so first of all, I need to open this picture with Photoshop. So I'm going to right click, click open with Photoshop. Now I'm on the Mac. So if you're on the PC, you should have a similar procedure. Okay, next I need to copy this image. So I'm going to press Command plus A on a Mac and Control plus A on a PC. And as you can see now the whole image is selected. And then I'm just going to copy the image with Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC. Okay, next I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to change the size of the new document. So it's going to be 2560 by 1706, just to keep the ratio. And for the resolution, I'm going to type 144. Click on create. Okay, now I can just hit Command and V on a Mac and Control and V on a PC. And that's going to paste my image. Okay, now let me zoom back out. And now I'm going to hit Command plus T on a Mac and Control plus T on a PC. And then I'm just going to drag and resize the image. Okay, that looks about right. Let me hit enter. And now we need to save my image as a JPEG. So there are a few ways. If you go to file, you can either click on save or save as or save as a copy. But we're not going to use that. Instead, I'm going to go to export and then save for web legacy. OK, so as the name says, this is going to help us to save for the web. Mine was set on PNG as a default and we don't want that. So in the drop down here, select JPEG. Now, mine was already set on the quality of 85. And it tells me that it's going to be 942 kilobytes. So in the first step, we try to aim under one megabyte. I'd like to be closer to 500 or 400 kilobytes, but hey, 900. Okay, let's do this. So click on save. So it's going to ask us where we want to save it. Let me give it a name, hit save. Okay, so now if we take a look, the final size is 966 kilobytes. So it's still better than 14 megabytes, but still not quite what we want. So for that, let's open the squoosh.app website. And I'm just going to drag the image. And now we need to choose a format. So I'm going to choose WebP. Now the quality, I'm going to choose 85. And as you can see, the file size has been reduced by a whooping 86%. So it's now 137 kilobytes. So let's save this. Let me change its name. So it's going to be up to hit save. So we went from almost 15 megabytes to 966 kilobytes down to 137 kilobytes. So we divided the initial size by 108 times. And once again, it's hard to tell the difference. So this is the initial file. So 15 megabytes. This is optimization one and this is optimization two. 
Now, of course, if you start to pixel peep, you will see a difference, but just looking at it like this on a beautiful retina screen, it looks beautiful. I mean, I can't really see a difference, except of course that we divided the initial file size by more than a hundred times. Okay, now let's take a look at a completely free solution. And this solution is called PhotoP. So PhotoP.com. Okay, so as you can see, it looks a lot like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, except for the ads on the right hand side, but it's understandable because after all, it's a free tool. So click on open from computer, select your file, click open. And next you wanna to go to edit, copy. Then you wanna to go to file, new. And where it says width, you want to type 1560. And where it says height, you want to type 1706. Then click create. And now we want to paste the image we just copied. So you can either use a keyboard shortcut or you can go to edit, paste. And then you want to go to edit one more time. Click on free transform. And let me zoom back out. And now we want to resize our image, but you want to hold the shift key on the keyboard. So let me show you, I'm just going to resize because if you don't hold the shift key, this is what's going to happen. It's not going to look good. So make sure you hold the shift key until it snaps. And once again, you don't want any black bars at the top or at the bottom on the left or right hand side. So once you're happy with the result, click on enter. Great. Next, you want to go to file, export as JPEG. And now you can select the quality like we did previously. So I'm going to pick 90, just like I did for Affinity Photo. And here at the bottom, I can see the estimated file size, 360 kilobyte, which is good actually for a first optimization. So let me hit save and I'm just gonna type a new file name, hit save. Okay, and now let me select the file I just saved and drag it onto the Scooch.app window. Once again, let's select WebP. The quality should be 85 and we're down 73% with 101 kilobytes. So let's save this. So for photo P we went from 14,800 divided by 101. So we divided by 146 times. All right. So let's take a look at the final results. Okay, so this is the original image, which is 14,800 kilobytes. Then we have the final Affinity Photo Optimization, 138. The Photoshop Optimization, 137. And last but not least, PhotoP, 101 kilobytes. Okay, but now let's take a look when it's maximized. So this is the original image. And next, this is Affinity Photo. So you can see right away, there's a slight difference in color. Actually, not a slight difference. There's a big difference in color. So you may want to watch out for that. Now, in terms of quality, it's the same quality. Here, we're just talking about a different tint. Okay, next, let's go to Photoshop. So the Photoshop is really good also, and it kept the original color of the image. Not quite exactly, because when you go from the original image to an optimized JPEG, there will be some differences. So this is Photoshop. And then we have PhotoP. Once again, a different tint, if I can call it like this, but still very good quality. But you can see there's a difference between Photoshop and even the Affinity Photo one, because those two, Affinity Photo and Photoshop, the quality, uh, the sharpness, it's really good. But then when you go to the PhotoP one, it's still very decent, it's still very usable. But here on the Retina screen, I can see the difference. Maybe you can't see it with the YouTube compression. But like I said, it's still very usable. It still looks really, really good, especially because it's a free tool. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you I will show you some great resources to get images for your websites. So let's take a look. So the first resource is called Pixabay. Now, Pixabay comes with over 2.5 million of high quality stock images, videos, and music shared by their talented community. So you can use all of these on your website and it's really looking great. It doesn't look cheap for a free resource. And that's what I love about Pixabay. Now, let me show you, if we type architect, this is what we get. So bear in mind that the first results are not from Pixabay. If you click on any of the results here, it actually takes you to iStock by getting images and you have to pay for these images. Now, it's understandable, it's a free service, it's a free tool, so they still need to make some money, okay? But the rest of the pictures here are free. So you can pick any picture that you want. So let's open this one, for example. And as you can see, it's really good quality. 
you can get all the details from the pictures it was taken on a Nikon D700 I mean it looks really really good and here is the Pixabay license free for commercial use no attribution required so that's great next Pexels now I don't know how many images and videos are shared on Pexels because it doesn't really say but it's the same principle it looks really good really quality images you don't find those cheap images and that's what I love about those resources I'm sharing with you today. So once again, if we type architect, we have those results. Let me open this one. As you can see, it looks beautiful. I mean, the quality is really, really good. It looks really professional. And you can see because there's been almost 4 million views on this image alone. So the quality is really, really good. Next, Unsplash. So Unsplash brands itself as the internet source of freely usable images powered by creators everywhere. Once again, there's a lot of quality material here, but it seems like they only have pictures unless I'm wrong. And one of the great things is that you can filter by category. So here you got entrepreneur, wallpapers, 3D renders, textures and patterns, architecture, and so on. So if we type architect, once again, the first results are actually not from Unsplash. They're from iStock by getting images. So you need to pay for this. But if you scroll down, this is where you get the free images so let's open this one for example so as you can see it's absolutely beautiful and you can download it for free in small medium large or even original size and that's amazing now these resources are absolutely awesome but one of the downsides is that because they're free everybody using those resources and you may find yourself seeing the exact same picture on a different website and you might see that picture everywhere so in that case you may want to broaden your horizon and go premium and one of the premium resources that I recommend is Envato Elements. And it's premium, but it's pretty cheap because it's about $16 per month. Now, I know for some people that's going to be a lot of money, but as a professional, think about it. You can make that money back in a few minutes, if not a few seconds for some people. But you get my point. You can really make that back, especially because it's not only about pictures. Let me show you. It's about stock video, video templates, music, sound effects, graphic templates, graphics, presentation templates, photos, fonts, add-ons, web templates, and even more. That's crazy. You get all of that for $16 per month. And no, I'm not sponsored. I truly love this service. I mean, this is really a game changer, especially when you are a freelancer or you run an agency. Okay, so let me show you. If I type architect, I get 45,000 of results, but it's split between photos, videos, and the other categories so for the photos we have 26,000 results so these are the images so let me scroll let me open this one and as you can see professional quality beautiful lighting now bear in mind that because they don't want their photos to be stolen they put a watermark and they degrade the quality as you're watching them but when you download the final image if you subscribe the quality is just beautiful so let's close this and now let's go back up. And one thing I absolutely love about Envato Elements when it comes to photos is that it's got a second stock website because they purchased 2020. So if, if I click on go to 2020, and by the way, this name, I mean, they could have found a better name than 2020. And you know what I'm talking about. But for the rest, what I like about this stock is that they got a lot of non-stock looking images. Now, some look a little bit less professional, but that's on purpose. So, for example, this one, once again, they put a watermark and they degrade the quality, but don't worry, the final quality is great. But if you want a picture that looks more like a picture that you could have taken and not really a stock image, because, you know, people get used to stock images and when it's too stocky, you know, it looks fake. So I quite like that about 2020. Now, they have some in-between images that look really professional. You can see it's stock, but still, it looks a little bit less stocky. And that's what I love about this one. Like, for example, this one. Let's say that you build a website for an architect and you want to show some plans, but you don't want people to feel like it's a stock image. That's the perfect image. And you don't pay a dime extra. If you got your Envato Element subscription, you get free access to 2020. Now, there is one more thing that you can do, and that will be the cherry on the cake. And it's simply to give this video a thumbs up if you appreciated this content because it really really helps the channel it's only going to take you a split second but that's going to help me so so much and if you want more web design goodness make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything 
Now, if you've made it this far, image optimization should have no secrets for you anymore. And I'm really excited about how you're going to use this new knowledge. Now, if you'd like to know how I organize my website files and assets, make sure you click on the video appearing on screen right now. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.